Hi everybody, my name is Heather. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be embossing some papers together. I thought that I would make a very short, sweet video on how I emboss papers and what machine I use and we can just kind of go through like how to do it. If you have never embossed papers before, it might be helpful for you because I remember like when I first discovered embossing, I really, really loved it. I, I was just so in love with it and I wanted to understand like, well, how do I do that? And I, I see that there's like a lot of these different machines out there and I just am not sure which one I wanna use and I really didn't wanna spend a ton of money. So um, I ended up choosing, because I went onto YouTube and I started like Googling or searching, you know, embossing videos, like how do, how do you emboss paper, embossing machines, like different things like that. So I decided to get this Sizzix Big Kick machine it's called the Big Kick, but they don't make this anymore. And But it is actually identical to the Sizzix Big Shot. And I'm going to list that in my description so that you can find that machine. But um, my mom has the Big Shot and I have this one and they're like literally the same machine. So anyways, um, what else can I tell you about it? So I do not, I have never used a Cricut or any other like electric machine. I've only used this one, so I, it's just kind of basic. It's manual, it's not a elect, an electric machine. So I think the pricing for this one is around $100 or maybe like from 100 to 130 if you're in the US at, at this time, that's about the, the pricing for this. So for me, I didn't wanna spend a lot on, like I, I've often thought that I would love to buy a Cricut, but I just, I haven't done it yet. So this is what I use now and you can do embossing and you can also do die cuts and it's just a great little machine. I think it, I think it's a wonderful choice. So the way it works is there's like this platform here and then you roll it. There's a, they give you this um, like platform that slides into the machine. Okay. And this is what is called a, embossing folder and if you have never seen an embossing folder before it's just a little folder that you insert a piece of paper into let me see where is the little piece of paper I can show you um, you just kind of like put a little piece of paper in there and you close the folder okay and then you're going to run it through the machine and I'm going to show you that here soon but um and then the platform is like it tells you what different things like so you would leave it on this one if you're using die cuts so it shows you like the little framelits and thinlets and then it opens to this one for textured impressions which is kind of like the textured impressions is kind of like the same as like this embossing folder. So I typically use this one whenever I'm using this folder. So every folder is a little different. They have some 3D folders too that I'm gonna cover. And then this one, um, like if you start to use your machine and it's a little bit too hard to get through, then it gives you another one like where it's not quite as much pressure going through, if that makes sense. It just depends on like the thicknesses of the folders. So for example, I'm gonna show you here, like this one is called a 3D folder and it is very, very thick. Whereas this one is very thin. So there's different thicknesses and you kind of have to get that, that pressure just right to run it through the machine. And it's all about practice and kind of having fun. So it's really not that difficult. So what we will do is, okay, so another thing that this machine does is it cuts die cuts. So I'm gonna show you that too, but we'll do the embossing first. So I really, really love a good white embossed paper. I use the white all the time. So what I do is I just get a regular copy paper. I think this is a 26 pound copy paper. And I just run this through the machine and that's what I'm gonna start with first. Just to show you um, 
kind of like what I do. So what you can do is, and sometimes you can put two pages in, like to get, like two, two papers in the, the embossing folder together, but it's not all, it doesn't always work. So we'll just start with putting one in. And basically you just take your embossing folder and I know that this is the top because of the, the pattern that's on there. And I just put my paper in. So for example, like if there was a pattern on this side and this was plain and you wanted the embossing to be raised onto the pattern part, then you wanna make sure that you know which, which side is the top of your folder and which side is not, okay? So then I need to stand up here. So the, with your embossing machine, they give you these plates and they're just clear plastic plates. And if you see like there's a lot of different scratches and different things on mine because when you use die cuts, it kind of indents into the plates. So they end up not looking very pretty after a while. <laughs> I remember when I first got this, I was like, is that normal? Is that like normal that that is like messing that up but it is very normal and you can replace these but I've never had to so you basically lay down wait I need to get to this so I'm gonna open it to this one because I found that this size this um this plate is the best one for this folder so then you lay down one of your clear plates that they give you. You lay down your embossing folder with your paper inside and then you lay down another plate and you kind of make a sandwich. They call it like a sandwich. And then you put it into your machine and kind of get it ready in there. And then you just take it and start feeding it through. You might have to hold the top. There's a handle here that you can hold and you'll feel like a pressure going through. And sometimes you'll hear a click after the embossing folder like passes through the other side. And then once you get it through, you take off your, take your paper out and then you are left with your beautiful embossed page. So pretty. So yeah, so that is basically how that works. So we'll do a couple together. So I'll show you what that looks like with um, tea dyed paper instead of just like the bright white. I just have a piece of, you know, kind of cream tea dyed paper. You can literally use any paper you like. You can use cardstock. You can use, I'm going to show you to, how to use some printables too. I like using those as well. So you make your, so you put your clear down. You put your paper in your embossing folder and you lay it down and then you add your other clear one to the top to make your little sandwich. And then you start rolling it through your machine. And it will click that. And then you have this gorgeous print whenever you're done. So it looks really beautiful on like, this is a very lightly dyed, tea dyed paper, but all of the different, you know, colors are just gorgeous. So, so yeah, so that is that one. So maybe we'll try a different folder. Um, let's see, there's also like larger, there's different size folders. So I wanted to talk about that. So this one here is an Anna Griffin folder. It's one of my favorites, but this one is retired. It's no longer made, so it's kind of difficult to find. I can't remember. Oh, wait, it's called Blooming Damask. I don't know if you would be able to find it anywhere, but I don't think so. And then this one I got on Amazon, and I will link the link for this one because this one is my favorite one. And then this one is like a little polka dot one that I bought at Joanne Fabrics. So I wanted to show you like there's different size folders. So it just depends on what you get, but you can fit all of these 
I think it's up to five by seven through this machine. Okay, so for this next one, I wanna use this um, 3D one. This is made by Tim Holtz and it is, I have never used this before. So this is gonna be my first time using it with you guys. And this is the packaging on this one. So yeah, it's supposed, so like the 3D means that there's a little bit more, like there's different levels of, of like the raised pattern throughout the, the pattern. And so it makes it, um, how do I wanna say? It's like, it's like a little bit more depth to the, to the actual embossed, embossed paper. So the way the 3D ones work, because they're so thick, that is going to act as our bottom plate. So you know how we were doing the little sandwich with the plates? We're only gonna be using one, not two. So we're gonna put our paper inside of this. And I think I'm gonna use this pretty blue paper. It's just a blue hand dyed paper. And I'm just going to take and put the paper inside the folder. And then I know that this is the top. So just making sure that I put it how I want it. And then I'm going to lay it down on my platform. And then, like I said, this will be the bottom plate. Oh, I know what I need to do. So we want to make sure we have the right level here. And I know that the 3D folders work the best on this one for me, or at least most of them, so we'll try it first. We'll try this, this level. So we're gonna put that down, and we're gonna put this plastic one on top, and then we are going to run it through. So basically, if you run it through and there is too much pressure, then you know that you kind of want to go down. That's the lowest one that you can get. And then if there's not enough pressure, then you would want to flip it to like this next one up, if that makes any sense. And then there is our impression, which that is really, really beautiful. I just love that so much. That's a really pretty folder. So yeah, so that is that one. And then, um, another thing I wanted to say is like, if you notice that you're starting your, sometimes when you do these folders, the, the folder can tear the paper. So like you would notice like, oh, you can see on here. It did. It tore that right there. So sometimes it's like the pressure from the machine just cuts through the paper, but I'm not worried about that one, but sometimes it can be like a lot. So if you have that happening, you wanna decrease your pressure. So you wanna move down a level or you wanna increase the paper thickness that you're using. It could be that your your paper is just too thin and too fragile for, for the cutting process of, or for the, I'm sorry, embossing process. So it would like almost die cut it in a way. So yeah. So next I will show you um, how I like to use a printable. So I think I'm gonna use this one and I'll show you like you can just emboss printables whatever, whatever patterns you like, you can emboss pretty much anything. But we will use, I'm go back to this one. Lay down my first plastic piece and then I will go back with this one. Let me just put that in there like that. And then where is the other? Oh, here. Okay, and then we'll put this on top. And then push it through. Let's 
see how that looks. So pretty. I just absolutely love that. I really love putting it onto the printables. I think it gives such a pretty effect. And then I'm gonna take that one and I'm gonna use this damask on it. So it doesn't fit all the way, but that's okay. We're just gonna do with what we have. Make our little sandwich. So yeah, so you can definitely go onto YouTube and look up different videos out there. There's a lot of different ones available. Sizzix has a bunch of videos actually using this machine. Well, it's like more the Big Shot machine, but it's the same. Pretty. I hope this is showing up good on, on the camera. It's just so pretty. I'm just so in love with this process. So whenever I first started, I was really, really inspired by Amity Bloom. She did a lot of different embossing in her journals and I just really wanted to do it myself. So I was also super inspired by Anna Griffin and she is a famous card artist and she sells a lot of different products. She has a lot of embossing folders. So if you go on to AnnaGriffin.com or you go to, like I think she sells on QVC and H hsn home shopping network and like she'll have specials and you can find different embossing folders from her sometimes i think it's fine to hard to find like embossing folders that i like i don't always find them so so yeah okay so what do we want to do next maybe we'll try a we will try a um die cut I'll show you how that works. So for the die cuts, it says to use the top. So that's what we'll do. We're gonna have this in the bottom and then put our plastic down. And this is what a die cut looks like. I have one over here, whoops, prepared. So this is like a little um, kit of die cut tags that I purchased. I'll show you the little kit. Pretty sure I got this at Hobby Lobby. But this is the, it's by Sizzix and it just has all sorts of different sized tags that you can use. So that's what these are. And basically what you do is you take your die cut and you lay it, there's like a cutting side that has like the the little ridge and you lay it on the place of your image where you want the die to cut it so i'm going to um i need a pair of scissors I'm going to cut this sheet here so this is a printable from my shop from the uh 38 rue bourbon kit and I'm gonna use this to make a couple tags here. So we'll lay our image down here that we wanna use. And then I'm gonna take this largest tag, putting the cutting side on top of the image and kind of place it where I want it to cut. Like you can kind of see, you know, where the image is gonna be on the tag. And then you take your other piece and lay it on top, being careful not to move it so that it doesn't get off center from where you put it. And then you're just going to run it through your machine the same way that you did with your embossing folder. Just like that. And then you come back and you have a tag. I love this tag one because it gives a little stitch along the edge, which is super cute. And I used cardstock for this. It's a little bit of a thicker because I want it because I knew it was going to be a tag. So yeah, so we could do like the rose if we wanted to or maybe we'll try one of these other ones. Let's see. 
maybe we will try this circle on this little lady. try that and then I need my the top like you could actually put multiple in at one time but just for the sake of the video I'm gonna do one so even though this is manual and you have to like hand crank that it's really not that big of a deal so cute so there's our little tag. So you could just sit and keep making a bunch of these for whatever project. Maybe we'll make one more. I love this bigger, this bigger tag. I think this could be really pretty. So lay it down, place it where you think you might like it and then start feeding it through. So kind of like that video I shared the other day on the texture paste, I like to sit and make a bunch of this kind of stuff all at one time and then I put it in a box. <coughs> Excuse me. And like save it for whenever I'm creating. That's so pretty. You know, like save it for whenever I'm creating a journal or whatever. So I want to show you this other die cut that I use a lot and it is created by Tim Holtz. It's a rose patterned one and so you can get into like some really intricate uh, die cuts. So for this one there's three of them that come in the package and you get all three of those and they're all each so pretty. Like you could use this one on the inside of an envelope or I'm going to show you what I like to do with this one. And I kind of got this idea from Shabby Soul. She did it. I just take a lunch bag and actually I'm just going to rip it. I'm not going to cut it. I like the rough edge of that. And then I'm just going to cut off a layer. to give myself kind of like a sheet of brown paper here. Okay, so once you have that, then you can take it and fold it. Well, I actually, I kind of need this to be straight. So I'm just going to cut that like that. So one of those edges is going to be a little bit rough. Fold it in half. Okay. And then you're going to get your, let's see, where did they go? Here we go. Get your bottom plate. So again, we're going to use this top part for the die cut. We're going to lay down this brown paper that I folded in half. And then we're going to lay this on top like this. I'm going to leave a little bit on the edge just so it doesn't get too delicate once all the cuts are made. And then I'm going to put the other piece on top of that, being careful not to move that die cut. I'm going to run it through. And then what you are left with is these rose impressions inside of this brown paper bag, which is so pretty. And I like to take a little paintbrush and just kind of go over to get out all of the little pieces that are left. 
So yeah, so you could have some really super intricate die cuts that are out there available. But I just love this one. It is so pretty. And then what I like to do with it is I tend to use it in my journal. Like I'll use this as a page and I think it looks so pretty. So yeah, so that is that one. What else can I show you? I guess that's about it. Oh, I know what I wanted to show you. I wanna show you just really quickly on these embossed papers. Just one sec. Okay, so once you have your embossed papers, and in particular, if you do them on like a colored paper, I really like to go over it with chalk a little bit. So if you just take, like I have like just some kids chalk, just it doesn't really matter which kind, but on, um, on the raised part, I like to just go over it a little bit with my chalk and it's very subtle, but it just kind of gives a little bit of white on there. And if you don't mind that chalk might get onto like another paper in your journal or whatever, this is a really fun little technique. So let's see if that shows up. Yeah, I think you can see like the white on there. Let's try it on the blue, it might show up a little better. So you can see how it just kinda and then if you get some on the page, you can I mean, they have all sorts of different inks and different things like you might even be more familiar than me about it, but it's just something I like to do, so I thought I would show you. I think the chalk just looks subtle and pretty and I love it. I think it shows up a little better than the other. That is so pretty. So yeah, so basically guys, that is the embossing tutorial. I hope I covered everything. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I left out. So I will link the Sizzix Big Shot Machine in my description and I will also link the embossing folder that I used for this one and then I will link these and what else could I use oh I wanted to show you like so I really like to use the white embossing folders because like a lot of times we use a lot of different aged colored printables and different types of papers that are aged so the white just gives such a nice contrast so that's just an example of how I use it in my tags and stuff so so yeah so I hope you guys all enjoyed this process and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.